Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I'm going to talk about RSA implementation using Carmichael function. Some libraries use Carmichael function, some uses Torsion function, for example, Euler's Torsion function. I would, I would like to uh, spend some time explaining what's the difference between these two functions, Carmichael versus Torsion. Okay, Euler's Torsion. Um, we, we can um, very quickly define this function and, and uh, try to apply that to RSA, okay? So in RSA, we would need um, a couple of parameters, of course. One is the encryption, another is the decryption. Um, so how is encryption? We have already defined it in the, in the earlier segments. So I will very quickly write this encryption function is based on the fact that you take the message that you would like to encrypt, uh, you would raise it to power E and then uh, you compute mod N. Okay. E and N are public parameters uh, um, of the recipient of the message M, okay? And uh, this will give you a number C, okay? You send C to the recipient. The recipient will take your C and raise it to his private, his or her private D, which only the recipient knows. And uh, you will get back the message um, yeah, okay, this is the basic construction of RSA, okay. In practice, we will apply padding first before we compute this, but that's something I will not talk about in this presentation. So this is the core RSA function, okay. Um, now the question is, how are E and Ds related to each other, okay? That is, that's where the Carmichael discussion comes into play, okay. In some implementations, in textbooks in particular, even the first research paper from RSA, um, had this relationship. E dot D is one mod um, pi of n, okay? Pi of n is the Euler's uh, torsion function, okay? Written like this. Okay, so this allowed us to uh, uh, get back M from C power D. So we already saw the proof, so I will not talk about the proof again. This is the basic classic construction, okay? Um, but in the paper of RSA, the very first paper, uh, there was a discussion about Carmichael under the hood a little bit. Um, it's, it's hidden in the paper. Um, you could see that you could replace pi of n by any other function, okay? And the Carmichael function is one such function, okay? Um, let me now define Carmichael function. This is clear, this is a torsion function. This, um, we have already seen pi of n is nothing but, um, P minus one, Q minus one, uh, because we assumed in RSA, N is made of two prime numbers, P and Q, distinct prime numbers, and, and only the owner of the public private key pairs would know that, okay? This is the Euler's torsion function. On the other hand, um, the uh, Carmichael function, I'm not going to define it so precisely, but you can uh, take it like this. This is a lambda of N, um, is nothing but, uh, LCM of P minus one, Q minus one. Okay, the least common multiple of P minus one, Q minus one. Okay, so I'll very quickly recall what LCM is. Um, suppose you have two numbers, say uh, two and a four, the LCM is um, the least common multiple, meaning what is the smallest number that will, uh, that can be written as a product of two and a four. Okay, so obviously the smallest number is four. Okay, four can be written as product of four, four into one, and four can also be written as product of two, two into two, okay. Uh, what about LCM of uh, eight and 12, maybe something more interesting, okay. Um, it's uh, 24, because 24 can be written as uh, three times eight, and 24 can also be written as uh, two times 12, okay. So that's basically the definition of LCM as an example, okay. So what is the benefit of using lambda of n versus pi of n, okay? In some implementations now, um, instead of this, instead of this, they have basically rewritten this as follows, e times d congruent to one mod lambda of n, okay? So what is the benefit of this? But remember, lambda of n is just the LCM of p minus one, q minus one. That means lambda of n is less than or equal to pi of n, right? Because LCM is the smallest number that's a multiple of eight and 12. Of course, eight and 12 is 96, which is, which is also a multiple of eight and 12, but that's a large, large number. So we can conclude that LCM is smaller than the product of the 
the factors. Okay. So what is the benefit now from performance point of view is that we are now going to compute the D in, um, in a smaller number, lambda of n, comparing to pi of n. Okay, um, you, it's not too many uh, digits you can save or too many bits you can save because of lambda of n because P and Qs are random primes. So LCM of P minus one, Q minus one will be a large number. So it's not something um, remarkable speed up, but still a few bits here and there is, is actually pretty good, you know. RSA is already um, kind of a slow in terms of performance because of ex exponents in large numbers. So any anything that you could squeeze is, is good. So anyway, E times D is congruent to one mod lambda of N. So in, this is one way to derive the D, okay? This is another way to derive the D. Some libraries use this, some libraries use this, okay? All right, both of them are correct because um, uh, I will show you now why both of them are correct. Well, this one is correct. We already proved E times D is congruent to one mod pi of N is helping us to, to recover the message M from the ciphertext C. But how come E dot D is congruent to one mod lambda of N also is going to help us? We can now quickly do that. Okay, so uh, let me now, uh, let me now prepare the proof for that. Why lambda of N will recover M from the ciphertext C. That's important, okay? All right, so what is lambda of N? We, we saw lambda of N is nothing but LCM of P minus one, Q minus one, which means um, E times D is congruent to one uh, mod, right? Um, LCM of, I can write it here, LCM of um, P minus one, Q minus one. Okay, a uh, couple of brackets. LCM of P minus one, comma Q minus one. Okay, so which means E times D is basically some constant K times, um, well, this, this is nothing but uh, uh, lambda of N, so I can keep on writing lambda of N. Um, plus one, right? That's the definition of mod anyways. Okay. So now let's start thinking about the proof. Why would uh, this D, when I derive it this fashion will give me the M back. Okay, let's consider C power D. C power D is nothing but, C is nothing but M power E, M power E D, right? Okay. Which is nothing but M power K times lambda of n plus one, okay. What is this? This is nothing but um, m power k times um, LCM of p minus one, q minus one into m because, because there's a power plus one that means the same as m. Now we can start thinking, um, in terms of Chinese reminder theorem. I'm going to use Chinese reminder theorem to sp split this problem into two parts. Our goal is to compute C power D mod N, but we'll do C power D mod P first and then C power D mod Q, okay? So uh, let's compute C power D mod P, okay? I'm going to assume one more thing now. I'm going to assume um, the case that M is, um, and not a multiple of P, okay? Therefore, I can apply Fermat's theorem that we talked about earlier, okay? So this is C power D, okay? So our goal is to now compute C power D mod P. All right, um, what about the numerator now? Remember, um, we talked about this also. Whenever you want to compute C power D mod P, this is same as computing C power D mod P minus one This is something we already talked about in a group. This is this is a group, right? Z star P is a group. So we can always write C power D mod P minus one mod P in the, okay, that mod P should keep coming, okay? And now the goal is to compute D mod P minus one. So how do we compute D mod P minus one? Um, well, let's think about it. What is C? C is nothing but M, M power E. So we have M power E D, 
Okay, so we have m power ed, which is nothing but m power ed. What is ed? ed is nothing but k times some multiple of lambda n, which is nothing but, uh, let me write it lambda n for example, uh, here plus one. Okay, all right, mod p. Now we can ask ourselves what is the value of m power k times lambda n this part? Well, we need to still write the mod p minus one. Remember, this is already here. So I will put a bracket here just to make it clear. This is mod p minus one. Okay, lambda n is nothing but the Carmichael function, which is the LCM of p minus one q minus one. The, because of mod p minus one, that this particular term will cancel out on the numerator. So we'll have m mod p. Okay, so you go, you have seen the proof now. Hopefully, clear that we can take c power d mod p. We get m mod p, which is exactly what we need. And if you do the same with instead of p, replace it by q you will get c power d mod q is also mapped to uh, m mod q, okay? So what we have proved so far is this, um, what we have proved is this interesting fact that c power d mod p maps to um, m mod p, therefore c power d mod q will also map to m mod q, um, just replace p by q, so you should get the same result, okay? So, so far we have achieved this goal. We took the C power D and we computed, we, we actually shown that C power D mod P is nothing but M in mod P and C power D mod Q is also M, okay? That means we basically proved that because of Chinese reminder theorem, C power D is C power D mod P times Q which is nothing but n is also m. Okay, this is the basic definition of Chinese remainder theorem. We talked about it in several segments. All right, so this is great. We achieved the, the goal of um, decryption. Okay, um, I skipped this, the simple case that the message is a multiple of p, which is easy because when it's a multiple of p, um, you, your, your um, m power e mod um, uh, n, when you put it into mod p will be zero. So, so it's easy to go, uh, compute using Chinese reminder theorem. Well, let me quickly write this. Um, suppose M is a multiple of P, okay? Uh, what can we say about um, uh, yeah, C power D? Okay, C power D is nothing but M power ED, right? Okay, if M is a multiple of uh, P, what can you say about mod P? Uh, M power ED mod P must be zero, okay? And we assumed, um, zero is same as m mod p. Remember I said m is a multiple of p. So, so in this case also, we proved that m power ed is same as m in mod p. Similarly, if m is a multiple of q, m power ed mod q will also be m mod q. So we proved the general case in both cases. Okay, anyway. So this is the proof to show to you that any multiple of p minus one, q minus one is, is enough. Uh, to derive the de decryption exponent. Okay, now let us let me do a quick uh, proof. Um, well, let me show you a demo of this thing, okay? Uh, I'll first derive a D using pi of n, but then during decryption, I will use a different D and I'll show you I can still derive the same message, okay? So, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier that some implementations use um, the a lambda function, and here is an example, right? You can see that um, this is bouncy castle implementation. Um, they, they derive a P and a Q and compute P minus one, Q minus one. And then um, as you can see here, they're doing LCM computation and uh, their D is E mod inverse LCM. So this is something that I talked about on the whiteboard. Okay, anyway, let's get back to the um, demo of um, this function now, where I'm I'm going to use one d pi of n based, and then I change it to a lambda n. All right, let's get get it going. So it's a simple main function, right? I'm using 1024 bit um, to to make the demo quick. In practice, you should be using at least 2048 or whatever key size that's currently valid. Um, okay, so key size and the exponents are fixed here, and then the key generation algorithm will give me my 
um, yen. Uh, I'm assuming I'm the owner of the, the, the system. So therefore I'm getting the private keys, yen, P, Q, Pi, and D. These are all private except the public yen, right? Yen and E are public, okay. So, and then I'm going to encrypt a random message, okay? I'm going to select a random message uh, from the possible set of messages from one through n, excluding n, um, excluding one. And I'm going to uh, perform an encryption of that random message using the RSA encryption function, m power e mod n. And I'm going to decrypt it using the decryption function. This is something we talked about earlier, but let me show you uh, the D that I have derived here. The D here is basically the Euler's quotient function. As you can see, I'm using the pi function. But what if I change the D to uh, lambda function, the, the Carmichael function, let's do that. Let's, let's first run this thing. So to, to show to you this is correct as it is, that assertion is not failing. Let me introduce an assertion failure. Okay, so it's failing, therefore I, um, the program is correct. All right, now let's um, change the D into something different. Let's select a different D, okay, let me call it D2, is LCM of uh, P minus one, Q minus one. And then I will use, um, well, um, I have to use mod inverse of E comma, LCM of P minus one, Q minus one. And I'm going to use that D2 instead of D to, to check whether the decryption still works. Yeah, it still works. So, this is the, the trick that I was talking about. Now let's, let me show to you what is the actual benefit in terms of performance, okay? Uh, what is the length of B2, uh, D2 first? Let me print that. Print um, bin of D2, D2. Um, the two uh, colon is just to truncate a string B. Uh, Python gives me B as a prefix whenever you convert an integer to binary. So I, I will get rid of that. And now I will print the length, okay? So I'm going to try to print the binary length of D2. Okay, so let's see what did that happen. Oh, I need to put a bracket. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Let, let me also print the length of the um, the other D. Okay, the the one that is using um, the lambda uh, the Euler's torsion function D lambda. Uh, Euler, okay. And uh, this is the Carmichael. Okay, let us see what happens. What is the difference in the size hmm? in terms of the exponent? You see here, there's um, Euler is 1024-bit D, Carmichael is 1023-bit D. So you get a small, uh, relatively small D in terms of the bit size. Even if you think it is only one bit, it matters because you're talking about uh, a number as big as 2 power 24, uh, 2 power 1024, which is much bigger than 2 power 1023, okay? So that, that may be the, the reason why the implementations prefer this uh, Carmichael implementation, okay? Still, it's okay to use the um, oil distortion function. It's nothing wrong. Some implementations use that as well, okay? But it's good to know uh, that both, both are correct, okay? In terms of uh, how to derive D from public exponents uh, E and um, public value N, okay? That's basically what I wanted to show to you, thank you.